Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this um, second session of um, Framework um, People are DCs Framework presentation. In this case, we are looking at um, um, look, looking into the AD, um, ADSN um, uh, ARDC co-developed uh, framework for healthcare analytics infrastructure. Uh, to begin with. Let me um, invite. Um, uh, um, I mean, let let me acknowledge the country, and um, and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet, and we pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging. And uh, let uh, let me invite Adrian to kick off the session. Uh, Dr. Adrian Burton. No, no. Yeah. Uh, would it be okay if I sh I just have two or three background slides? Is it okay if I share my screen? Sure, okay. sure you can. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Adrian Burton from the uh, Australian Research Data Commons. The Australian Research Data Commons, the context for uh, us and you know, our role in uh, today's event is we're part of a national program uh, run by the Department of Education called NCRIS. It runs national facilities to support leading edge research. Um, there's a 24 different uh, facilities there that are mostly kind of domain specific for astronomy or uh, earth science, etc. ARDC is a cross-cutting sort of digital and data um, facility. So we are supporting national initiatives for um, data and digital. We have a number of capabilities all the way from the right hand side there in storage and compute through data services, platform software, and, and all the way to the left hand side there, people and policy. We take a very um, what do you call it? Holistic view as to what infrastructure might be. You see those capabilities on the left of this diagram here. Uh, we actually then um, target all our capabilities at three different domain areas, three different themes here. The People IDC focuses in on health and medical. Our Planet Research Data Commons focuses on environment uh, and the uh, has an indigenous uh, focusing on humanities, arts, and social science. So today's uh, work is coming to you part of a, as part of our health and medical area, the People Research Data Commons. Uh, but of course, it has applications. As you can see, we join up all of our applications across the different areas as well. People Research Data Commons is a national scale infrastructure for health and research and research translation. We have four different challenges areas, data strategy, data discovery, secure data access, data integration, which is about bringing together you know, data from disparate sources and advanced analytics. And the work you're about to hear about today comes from that fourth stream around advanced analytics for uh, healthcare. Uh, the work that you're talk we're talking about today was a national consensus building and direction direction setting work around a framework to support AI uh, in infrastructure for re uh, healthcare research. And um, after, to, after today's event in the coming month, we will be transitioning to a number of national infrastructure projects in the areas. And so I'll just telegraph to you that that's work that's happening. And if you're interested in anything that you hear about today, please contact myself or Nana about being involved in the projects that are about to kick off. I'll hand back to Nana. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Adrian. And uh, at this stage, we will invite um, ADSN partners to um, give an overview of the framework that um, ARD, ADSN, Australian Research Data Common, and uh, ARDC have developed or co-developed. So uh, let me invite uh, Nicola 
Armstrong, Professor Nicola Armstrong from Curtin University. You are muted, Nicola. I had to be the first one to do that, didn't I? So um, good afternoon, everyone. It is now afternoon here in Perth as well. Um, so it's my pleasure to talk you through a little bit about what we did when we um, started designing the framework um, and what our findings were. And this has all been published in a report that is available on Zenodo. Um, and hopefully you might have seen it or have been involved um, in answering questions and attending workshops so that we could get your input when we were looking at what we needed to do. So Nana, can you switch to the next slide, please? So first up, um, just a definition of what we were particularly interested in was in infrastructure and that infrastructure could have been or encompasses um, hardware, which is what we normally think of when we think about uh, compute infrastructure or infrastructure for advanced data analytics like computers, storage, GPU processing, but also in terms of national reference data set assets, data assets like data curation and management of data, um, socio tech systems and assets and resources, frameworks, culture, policies, communities of practice, guidelines, that sort of thing. And of course, for advanced analytics, we were also really interested in tools and platforms and environments to do general or centralized analytics, collaborative infrastructure, federated learning, what sort of models people might be wanting to put in uh, to use on um, healthcare data going forward. So our approach was, um, Quite simple, um, we conducted surveys of um, a lot of people. Um, we had about 156 respondents that completed the survey in full. Um, we conducted an environmental scan to see what was out there. And we also looked uh, conducted some face-to-face -face workshops and one-on-one -on -one interviews to try and get um, everyone's opinion about everything to do with what they felt they needed in terms of infrastructure, covering all those um, facets of infrastructure and what they saw as issues or potential barriers um, and what they saw also as potential solutions for um, what could happen. And then we put it all together and came up with our final recommendations. So next slide, Nana. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of background to the survey responders that we had. Um, the actual full survey results are in the um, in the full report, but most of our survey responders had a PhD or were medical doctors. And in fact, most of them had qualifications in the health or biomedical area. Um, slightly smaller percentage had qualifications coming from mathematics, statistics, computer science, IT. And most were affiliated with the university. And of course, being affiliated with the university could also have meant that they were at medical research institutes. We asked them to rate their skills in programming and analytics, um, just so that we had sort of a baseline to see um, how much they actually were using analytics or doing analysis of data in their real life jobs as well. Um, and you can see that uh, most of them thought that they had good to excellent applied stats and maths, but um, not so many thought that they had um, very good um, cloud or HPC computing experience or skills or data engineering um, and database skills. So we asked them a whole series of questions around four major themes, which were data privacy and ethics, version control, um, data integrity. Uh, so how well did they trust or do they think they can trust the data that they are currently accessing? Um, and, and then, of course, about their compute resources. Were they in-house? Were they going commercial? Were they using the NCRIS providers? Um, and what sort of things that they were doing or wanting to do um, with the data that they um, have access to or would like to get access to in future? We then um, did, of course, an environmental scan. Thanks, Nana. Where we did, of course, a standard, standard literature review to see what was out there in the scientific or academic literature. Um, but we also took into account a lot of um, policy reports that have been published recently around the world about um, analytics and AI. Um, there are several uh, national and international in initiatives that are ongoing at the moment, such as the European Open Science Cloud. Um, the NIH in the US has, of course, the All of Us program and one that's quite similar to what we might want to do is the biodata catalyst. 
And we also checked out some of the platforms such as the UK Biobank where they have a lot of data that you now can only access if you use their um, research um, analysis platform, which is um, hosted in the cloud by AWS. And we considered things like synthetic data generation, data access and transfer, um, the analysis capabilities that are available on these platforms or that are available through some of these initiatives, um, including federated learning, and what sort of infrastructure would be uh, required in order to um, set up some of these things and, and what sort of in infrastructure was being provided or starting to be thought about by some of the um, national and international um, governments. <laughs> Sorry. Um, in the workshops, we um, uh, hosted three workshops this year. We had one to kick us off last year, which was part of the Australian Data Science Networks Conference, where we started to formulate what we might be wanting to look at and consider this year. Um, and the main questions that we had there were, how are health data and advanced analytics being used within the Australian scientific community at the moment? We had in-depth discussion with our participants and consideration of issues that were found in the survey and the environmental scan, um, as well as other things that came up in the workshops. And we did our best to get a wide audience from across academic disciplines, so maths, stats, IT, computing, and the health and medical sectors, and key stakeholders. Um, so we did our best to, to go out and try and get people from um, government agencies and universities and industry. Um, and so we held a series of workshops, but we also conducted a series of one-on-one -on -one interviews because of course not everyone can attend a workshop that's set at a certain day and time. So, yeah. So our key recommendations um, are focused around four key um, themes. So enhancing computational resources and data environments. And you can see here, we've got three key um, recommendations there. I'm not going to read them out. You can read them if you haven't already um, read the report, but just, yeah, we had recommendations around enhancing the comput computational resources and data environments that are available for health analytics. Um, next slide. Um, in standardizing data governance and curation, um, access to data, um, was a big one and uh, especially you know when dealing with health it includes things such as we we really have to deal with ethics considerations um, and the next one is on collaborative and ethical research initiatives so um, what can we do in in that sphere we had some um, recommendations there and the final one that we looked at was next slide please supporting workforce development and practical implications. So how can we help upskill our workforce that is currently in dealing with health and medical data to be able to use and want to use um, the resources that we might put forward um, to the best of their ability so that we get the most out of whatever physical infrastructure we might start to put in place. So my next slide. Um, so we have a group map going at the moment and feel free as part of this workshop to go into the group map. Um, first up, we have uh, one brainstorming thing on um, the report that we wrote um, and we're just wanting to get some feedback. Positive constructive feedback is always welcome. But do you, is, do you feel that there was any topic or issue that we missed or might've overlooked that we didn't manage to um, capture? in our report, please let us know. Um, that would be great. And if you think we did an awesome job, that's even better. And we definitely are accepting those comments. Um, now I'm gonna hand over to Nana and he's gonna talk about implementation uh, of what they're going to do, or what the ARDC is going to do going forward. And there are a couple more group map um, sections that you can fill in once you've listened to Nana in terms of what you think of the plan that uh, they're starting to put together. And in particular, what we'd really like to know is if you, when you're listening to Nana talk, are there anything that you can think of that might be barriers or might help you and your institution uh, uh, improve or, you know, use what the ARDC is proposing to implement? Because I think that's the whole purpose, right? That we end up with something that is going to be used and can be used by as many people as possible. 
So thank you, I'll hand up to Nana. Thank you, Nicola. Um, so this is about what we did uh, uh, with the output from these core design exercises. So that included actually two reports, I mean, two projects. One, uh, this particular one, uh, which is a which is which we are calling the framework project, which looks at uh, the breadth of issues through um, um, a large survey, a national survey, uh, environmental scan or the lit review, as well as uh, four um, workshop sessions, and uh, so that is a culmination of this knowledge that we are taking, and um, the second part is uh, the Pathfinder project, which is actually looking at a very cardinal issue of um, what happens to one of the key, the cardinal issue in, in healthcare, which is about the sensitive nature of the data. But owing to the sensitivity, both owing to the jurisdictional and organizational policies and so on, the data often cannot leave the premises. So which means it gets siloed and broken into so to, to address this very specific issue, we had um, a separate project, a companion or twin project running, which is called the Pathfinder project, looking at uh, federated learning and associated um, technologies and systems to investigate the viability of handling this. Uh, a separate workshop on this ran on Wednesday. And uh, so this is um, taking these two together what are we going to do with it? So this is about creating a reference architecture and then going to forward into program design. And um, so um, the overall, overall, what we were um, looking at is to um, take this information from the core design and using this, we were able to put together a roadmap and a blueprint or the reference architecture for future research in analytics and healthcare infrastructure and um, spanning for, uh, for works over next four years. And uh, the roadmap allows for a starting, uh, for starting a development of multiple, uh, um, uh, development on multiple fronts simultaneously, but also it's designed in such a way to afford flexibility and minimizing critical path. Okay. So in the, in the coming years, the blueprint would be put into action. Um, we will create a um, um, long lasting, safe and flexible um, AI enable architecture that would be like a playground. So in, um, in this case, let's look at some of the building blocks of this. So at the, um, there is underpinning infrastructure or Nectar Cloud and um, on, sitting on top of that, uh, tools, the platforms, and the environment. There is, of course, data. And then there is a number of socio-technical assets or resources, and, um, and everything come together in the hubs or um, virtual training, lab, virtual, lab, uh, virtual project labs or training labs, and so on. So in the beginning, there is Nectar. Of course, this is already an existing service, uh, but there would be some augmentation to this, particularly in terms of security certification. So um, uh, ISO 27001 um, um, is, uh, is, is uh, in progress for, the, um, for a number of Nectar nodes. So it would be healthcare ready. Um, there would also be considerations about integrate, integration scalability, particularly about how to integrate with um, other commercial clouds on, and the foundational models and uh, as well as GPU and, and other um, um, uh, cloud, how to provide augmented compute. Then sitting on top of that are um, number of enabling tools, platforms and the environment, a range of which may include containers, um, specific tools like synthetic data generators, and federated analytics, network assets, and so on, and even modeling environments, some of which has been particularly requested to make 
uh, uh, learning curve um, less steep that includes uh, Copilot um, as well as other programming environments. And um, then of course there are data assets that would be the, that that include um, synthetic data, reference data, as well as a number of uh, metadata and ontologies that would come to aid in, in, in the research. Um, sitting on top or aiding all this are the socio-technical assets. What we call socio-technical assets are the softer side of the infrastructure. That includes, it could be training materials, guidelines, checklists, uh, policies, culture, even, even the provisions for collaboration and, and governance. And they all come together in, in this um, virtual labs. And the virtual labs can be for a generalist, it could be for training, it could be for projects, and it could also be for very specialist circumstances to be, um, uh, to be custom environments. But what is interesting is everything has to rise up and be made available uh, in some form or other through these virtual labs. So, so this is this is an interface that a researcher would act would actually um, uh, I mean would would be interacting through. And uh, of course, these are color coded, so everything comes together as as you can see uh, at the at the top. And um, so one, um, so where does, so how do we actually create projects from this? So one of the criteria that we are looking at is um, what, what, what would be, or I mean, uh, what and where should the co-investment uh, should flow? Of course, uh, there should be some innovation potential. Uh, it, it has to, enhance the research sector. It has to enhance the research infrastructure. And, um, but it also needs to be national. So it is intention is to not fund or not co-invest in um, very, um, what do you say, for one laboratory or for one, one researcher's um, assets or um, uh, infrastructure. It's rather, it has to have a broad interest and uh, it needs to address some barriers such as socio-technical complexity or say market failure. Market failure because there is no money, no one is stepping in, or it is so complex, lot of coordination, collab facilitation is required. And therefore that um, only an organization such as um, ARDC could actually step in and uh, to fill this gap. And whatever asset that is developed needs to be fair to the sector. It has to be findable, accessible, interoperable, and, and reusable. Of course, there are standard or um, table stake or considerations such as uh, um, risk, feasibility, and, and the long-term sustainability of the infrastructure. The number of these come together to actually help make the decision about how and where to a design, uh, how and where to direct the co-investment and how we design these programs and, and execute them. And uh, uh, Adrian, at, at this stage, um, Adrian, let me call, um, if you could step in and give an intro. Sure. Um, um, I'm getting a little bit of an so we, we had a look at the reference architecture. No, no, no. Can you hear me, uh, Nana? Yep, all good. I was just hesitating because I was getting an echo, but it's all fine now. So uh, as Nana has pointed out there, we had the reference architecture and road, and well, before the reference architecture and roadmap with all these uh, framework documents and the workshops and everything that led us to that idea of this reference architecture and roadmap. We were looking now to probably have some projects in a number of areas. <clears throat> they kind of just because we need to uh, in, um, invest with a number of partners in a particular area um, where there is a similar kind of skill. So let's take it from the bottom there. We'd be looking at an internal project here just around the 
secure uh, upgraded nectar that um, Nana has talked about. Remembering, uh, if you go back, Nana, is you most going back uh, to your just one step, uh, and one more? Yeah, to this at the top there, everything comes together, you know, as you know, coordinated products, etc. You know, for our researchers. But you know, we would have some projects to build some of this capability with different sets of partners. So, Nana, if you just go back to those. So here, you know, with our own internal Nectar team and we, you know, potentially you know relationships with other cloud providers, we would be looking at that underpinning uh, cloud level that's secure, upgraded, has the right GPU allocations, that has. Uh, certifications, but also network, you know, capabilities that are relevant to what we need. On the next step up, where uh, Nana said that there was a whole, um, do we call it a pilot project? Is that what it was called, Nana? Pathfinder. Sorry? Pathfinder. 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 There was a Pathfinder project that ran around federated learning. We are thinking for a a project that would look towards an Australian harmonized approach to federated learning. So the kinds of people that we might get involved in this project, the federated learning one, would be um, groups that already are conducting federated learning at a, a sort of national scale and are then looking to um, harmonize to um, to converge on some of the methodologies to design shared infrastructure um, in a way that uh, every time a new federated learning project happens, we're not both inventing methodologies and trying to convince partners like state health departments to come on board with some new bespoke approach uh, that we we're looking to have a, you know, a harmonized approach that the data custodians could come on board with um, in a more system, systematic way. So that's the, the going up from the bottom, we had Nectar Federated Learning. We're looking at um, the resources. Uh, and in this case, we'd probably be looking at a project that brings together all the kind of resources, socio-technical, remembering tools as well. We need a, a group here that, that comes together to say, what does the sector need as far as any kind of shared policies, any kind of new uh, resource materials, any kind of tools that we might need access to. You know, what are the models and um, tools that need are needed access to? That would be all part of our resource hub area of work. As Nana said, there is a layer at the top where we bring everything together, but we are looking at a project there that um, would probably be with more of our cloud engineering partners. Um, to create the, these um, virtual research environment um, platforms um, that can be reused. So um, all these are the kind of project areas that we're, we're looking at here. The, the exact words there are not, uh, um, make it look a little bit more separated than, than it actually would be. But uh, as Nana said, each of these areas would be looking, uh, have a project and how could that contribute to the uh, bringing all these resources together, whether it's uh, tools or federated machine learning uh, approaches um, together for um, the researchers? Um, I think I'll leave it there, unless there's um, anything further you wanted me to touch on, Nana. I sure. Yeah, th thank you, Adrian. So um, in this case, so we would, um, as we promised, we would create a long-lasting and safe, flexible AI-enabled infrastructure. But there are many paths to Rome, or many roads to Rome, so to speak. So we have designed it in such a way that um, a number of different initiatives would start in parallel so um, the, to, to minimize the critical paths, but all aimed at creating these virtual uh, labs, playgrounds at the top. And it would be supported, the technological part would be supported by the socio-technical assets, including training pathways, governance, and co-developed standards, framework, guidelines, et cetera. And um, the whole system would support analysis, modeling, decision support, 
um, in a variety of dis disease areas with measurable uh, diagnostic and improvement. So, um, so once again, we are going back into this group map. Now you have a better picture of what we have been saying. Maybe you could take some time to, um, I mean, I address all the three questions at this stage. So um, Anastasios has already put in um, the code and uh, um, and and the path in on in the chat. So if you if URL and the uh, and the code. So if you needed to copy paste, go ahead and uh, do that. Those you need to scan, please you can uh, you can scan this one for a moment. And you could you could continue to answer this at your own pace. And when we actually published the report, which I'm going back to the report again, there was also um, another um, survey um, question. So you are also welcome to uh, give you a feedback there. Okay, so this is this is where we are. And um, Adrian, you want to take this or uh, would you like me to finish it? I'm uh, happy for you to do that. Sure. Um, yeah, so we had the core design and uh, through which we have developed the framework and then we have developed the architecture and the roadmap. Now um, we have um, outlined how the core investment projects would proceed initially and in, initially it would be infrastructure development. And then we will bring this infrastructure to bear on disease applications. And uh, later, this would actually be turned into service. As, um, as a service improvement for the research sector. And these will give us uh, output and the outcomes. And the long-term impact, as we, um, as we said, would be, would be a measurable and diagnostic improvement, um, as well as an, 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 as an ecosystem, ecosystem of engaged partners for the knowledge sharing and influence, um, and, and hopefully sy a systemic change the behavior. So this QR code is taking is taking you, you to the People RDC um, advanced analytics page to which the reports are linked as well. Um, so I will return uh, back to uh, the audience or if um, Divya or Anastasios, if you want to run any Q&A, that would be Good as well at this stage. So we are, we invite questions from you as well. There are already some responses in the in the group map. Do you Thanks. want to read it out, maybe, or, uh, or should yeah. I put it out? Yeah, I could. Uh... Yeah, Okay, these are the contributor, contribution contributors to this these projects and uh, in in different forms and I will okay so there are some responses and um, okay how about upcoming LLM enabling? infrastructure and labs? Absolutely, absolutely. Very good question. Um, let me uh, tackle that. So definitely we are looking at, um, on, uh, on one hand, we are looking at co-pilots as enabling tools. We are also looking into some kind of a playground for um, maybe fine tuning or putting a rag, et cetera, on LLM for specific research purposes. And uh, so these, um, these are two, two ways LLM could be um, deployed. And um, so there, 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 is, there is certainly room for that in, in, in that context. Then, um, yes, I don't underestimate the complexity of the socio-technical elements, absolutely. It is very central to this. So we are. Um, so when we talk about infrastructure, that is why it is 
uh, we recognize it as a socio-technical system. And the socio-technical com technical complexity is quite central to that. In fact, one of the very reason we would get involved in, as mentioned earlier, is uh, there is some socio-technical complexity. It requires immense facilitation. Um, or there is some market failure or the combination of both frequently. And um, thank you. It says it's a sensible and pragmatic approach. And um, implementation uh, available can, um, and how agile will, will the approach be? Um, available, I did not quite understand. Um, could I mean, could you actually speak up? Maybe allow, I mean, um, give us some clarity on that. Or else add more information into the group map. Yeah. So my comment sure. in, in all of this as well is that um, the MRFF currently have a call out or had a call out recently for um, infrastructure in analytics. And so I wondered if, as the ARDC, if you could make any comment on that and how you fit into that or can relate to that and how we can get people to use NCRIS facilities rather than potentially developing their own in their own institutions. Sure. Without, um, Adrian, I think Adrian is better placed to answer this. Yeah. So without talking on behalf of the MRFF, but the impression I've got from being involved in different capacities over the time is that when MRFF says infrastructure, it's still a research project and it's kind of infrastructure that's very much uh, aligned to a project. And in any case, if you don't give it a very specific clinical or, you know, some kind of a, a problem focus, uh, you know, they still want a, a very specific research or clinical focus to the projects, even if it's called infrastructure. So it starts very much from that research side of things. Uh, the uh, uh, So to get an MRF of grant, you have to be actually doing some kind of, you know, very specifically applied research using that infrastructure. Um, our program is a little bit different, is that, you know, we're just here to... Um, provide uh, national approaches and national infrastructure um, to all um, research groups. Um, how you'd get in, uh, we'd probably turn it around, um, Nicola, or we'd be looking to turn it around, but you know, once some of these things are up and running, we would be hoping that anyone could include that into an MRFF grant as a pre-competitive, because the MRFF is still competitive, difference here is this is a collaborative infrastructure uh, and it's really designed um, to you know support leading edge research but it's uh, it's very um, collaborative in its development and we would hope that it's kind of the other way around in the end that when MRFF starts to get um, new proposals in the future if they're not referencing, you know, emerging national, you know, uh, models and infrastructure for doing federated machine learning, or um, yeah, if they're not, you know, they, they if someone says, oh well, we, you know, our project is going to develop a, you know, a very small version of, um, you know, some kind of socio technical asset or etc., that the uh, MRFF would be saying, well, how does this align with you know, the existing research infrastructure. We don't think we replace at all what uh, the MRFF is doing. It sort of complements it, but at, at that pre-competitive level. And um, <clears throat> that uh, in the past, that has been a, a common message from the MRFF. In fact, they've written it into the application process that, you know, please tell us, you know, before you start to build something, you know, very specific, you know, how you're uh, leveraging existing NCRIS facilities. And that goes not just for the ARDC. If you were talking about some big imaging project, you know, then the MRFF expects you to say, well, how is this related to the national uh, imaging facility NCRIS infrastructure? 
So in the same way, you know, we hope this would give a, some really big national uh, uh, directions and uh, services and support, and that any specific projects would be looking at applying this in diabetes and therefore having some more specialist sort of um, extensions. Yeah, so looking at, um, thank, thank you, Adrian. So there are a couple of more uh, comments to cover. One is underpinning vocabularies and ontologies are extremely important and key to success, absolutely. And uh, as you can see in the reference architecture, they do have a uh, place. And uh, yes, they would be, um, I, mean, they, I mean, they would be given um, a serious consideration and they are actually quite, part, in, in fact, central to a lot of work that uh, ARDC does. But because this is particularly addressing the advanced analytic um, component, and there are other components such as data discovery, integration, and so on, uh, we haven't um, emphasized um, all that in here, um, except to say that this, this is um, inextricab inextricably linked to the development. Adrian, so uh, you were saying something? Yeah, I was just going to give those examples in, uh, in other parts of ARDC. We are operating, for example, a research um, version of OntoServer, giving people access to you know, SNOMED uh, internationally. We just had a workshop yesterday about using mappings and uh, advanced uh, ontologies in, uh, um, in research and specifically in healthcare. Uh, we have another part of our program that's looking at, you know, standardization of uh, EMR records, as an example, uh, using the OMOP common data model. All of those programs are meant to provide a better quality sort of data input that can then, um, means that the advanced analytic tools can go a lot further and more efficiently. Um, there is... Um, another question on how agile will the approach be? I would actually um, pass it into multiple uh, levels. Of course, uh, we would certainly, um, at the level of development or at the cold phase, um, where rubber meets a road, we would absolutely encourage agile approach. And um, uh, at the level of commitment and making uh, commitment to programs. There are a, a number of things have to be locked in. So that is why these extensive consultations and uh, co-design that were an undertaken upfront. Uh, Adrian or maybe Kerry or anyone else want to, uh, Nicola want to comment on this? Uh, okay. Well, you know, look, uh... All of the, we've done consultation as we've designed this the, the the program structure. I suppose each of these components will also have continuous input from um, the research groups. Uh, and look, infrastructure is not like building a a small app. You know, we would be you know, you know putting into place. I don't know, um, uh, secure nectar. It's not actually a very agile project uh, because it's, you know, big, long, long lived, stable, predictable infrastructure at that level. So, but it is responsive and uh, responsive to need. So I think um, all of our programs, you know, have that beneficiary um, user sort of centered uh, design and um, iterative testing. Sure. Thank, thank you. Exactly. It, exactly my point. Too. There's some commitments need to be made in this uh, in the infrastructure programs. So it's not. Um, but other than that, in the, as far as the process goes, yes, uh, of development goes, absolutely, we would encourage agility. In that um, one other comment. I still don't understand what is meant by implementation as available. I take it as there are other similar systems available that's my interpretation yes of, of course we are we are not looking to reinvent the wheel where there is advantage um or to adopting co-adapting co-developing yes we would we would go for that um 
So at this stage, I put. Uh, Yana, there's there a question. Other question. Sorry, there's a question in the yeah. chat from Kim. Um, mm -hmm. If I can just read that. So, how adaptable yeah. will, will be the plan and implementation approach to the? How adaptable will be the approach to the proposed Privacy Act changes, um, especially with respect to omics data, for example, which I don't think was explicitly addressed in the report. Okay, um, that um, by itself is not um, as a, the changes to uh, Privacy Act. However. Um, what is baked into it is a, a responsible AI and responsible data management. And so, so that is that is certainly a part of the socio-technical assets that include in terms of guidelines, how it is done, and and so on would be baked into it. Um, as far as the infrastructure development, yes, it would follow the um, the current um, standards and would be state of the art as far as managing. This um, um, uh, the current data um, challenges and 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 so on, and um, so we don't expect an o complete overhaul of um, um, uh, the, uh, overhaul of the legislation. So these are incremental uh, um, changes, and it, this would be, as Adrian mentioned, this would be responsive to that, and to some extent anticipatory uh, too. And, uh, and also, yes, please. I was just going to comment also, Kim, that um, ethics was a big component of the report and a big concern for all researchers, um, yes. both in terms of trying to explain to users about ethics and what ethics they have, and also in terms of getting access to data that is, I'm going to say, buried under ethics, but, you know, that you have to apply to get access to. Um, and how that is then managed by any infrastructure that might be put in place is of concern to, to us as the report authors and, and to the ARDC in terms of the re implementation um, of dealing with all those. Uh, one of the things that came up with the workshops and in the surveys is that overlapping um, and the difficulties of communicating with ethics um, committees at different institutions and across different state boundaries, and et cetera, et cetera. And so we did float the idea of communicating with um, NHMRC and having some sort of um, requirement or specialist people on ethics committees that are specifically involved in and know a lot more about data as well and putting in some guidelines around that. So, yeah, that will help with the... Uh, um, any changes to privacy acts and, and people's personal information. Yeah. That's great. I guess because the biggest concern is really that you will actually see a contraction in, in you know, health data research, right? Because the proposed changes moving us towards a GDPR type model, but also one where there's actually punitive measurements in there for anybody losing sensitive health data, you know, the, the stakes are really rising for anybody working in this space in terms of being personally um, and financially responsible for any data mm -hmm. losses is massive. And, um, you know, it might then bring about greater requirements for, um, you know, on anybody working with any kind of sensitive data, which is, you know, any any kind of omics data is going to be classified as sensitive data, let alone, you know, imaging and other information because mm -hmm. you never truly de-identify data. So, yeah. you, you know, the, the, the stakes are going to be so much higher under whenever these changes do come through um, and whatever... Yeah. Like so, and we're dealing with data linkage. So it's not just going to be their genetic data; it's also going to be their imaging data and their hospital records. Yeah. So the stakes are going to be that yeah. that much higher across everything. Sure. Yes. So yeah, it's critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. In in fact, in fact, I might add that some of the um, design um, approaches are in responses to these anticipatory um, policy and uh, legal changes. Uh, that is um, uh, the, 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 I mean, um, augmented need for privacy is one, the need for federated learning as a network as, as increasingly so is another uh, anticipatory response. And uh, so is providing the adequate training and guidelines and um, around responsible AI, responsible data management you know, as, um, as part of the pink thing. Um, the socio-technical assets is also 
in anticipation. But we also want to make these in a, in a dynamic resource available through either co-pilot or something that is accessible and usable for people. Um, at this stage, I, I, I mean, uh, right now, I would also like to call on um, distinguished professor Kerry Mangasen, who is also part of this report, and uh, to say any um, any words. Yeah, thanks, Nana. Um, I just wanted to uh, to. Uh, acknowledge the work of the group that put the, uh, the has um, developed this report in this framework, um, and acknowledge also that it was a sort of a collaborative effort across different institutions. And I think that uh, the Australian Data Science Network is uh, has been um, an excellent vehicle to uh, to enable this collaboration. So thank you. Um, I, I think um, that all the rest of it has been said, Nana, and the report's been presented. Yeah, I'm looking forward to how we uh, go forward with this, and I think it'll be an excellent enabler for for research in Australia, and um, and the, it will enable a whole lot of other uh, research uh, activities to evolve through the use of this. But, uh, I appreciate the um, the efforts of the ARDC in developing it. Kerry, can I just take the opportunity from on behalf of the ARDC to yeah. Thank uh, the ADSN and all the other collaborators who've been part of the project because um, you know it's been a being able to work with a network of data science units around Australia has just given us that much broader um, viewpoint, which has been critical to the project. So thank you very much, uh, Nana. Just because I know somehow the minutes at the end of the hour always seem to go really quick, um, I just had put in. I just want to bring to people's attention. The uh, what I put in the notes there in the chat, the four areas where we will be working, and if you're interested in any one of these areas, please, please make sure you sort of contact us. You know, uh, going from the bottom, we'll be working on the underpinning nectar uplift. We'll be working on a virtual lab AI enabled sort of platform so that people can have these labs. Uh, we'll be working on just generally on all the resources that are required, including the tools, what kind of tools, what kind of data, what kind of social technical, all the resources. So we're looking at a project there to lead us on, you know, what kind of resources that we need to actually create and establish or, or um, subscribe to or, um, you know, bring into Australia. So that's that th the third one. And then the last one is this network of federated machine learning initiatives. For that one, we'd expect the participants in that project to have a federation of machine learning that they're actually doing or you know have um, started or are planning. Uh, and the idea there would be to see how we can, again, align a number of initiatives and start to hone in on interoperability, uh, harmonization, um, and sharing there. So anyway, the, those different areas that we've been working in, and of course, we want to bring these all together into actual um, uh, online environments that the researchers can do to access all of this stuff that we're talking about here. So uh, I think we are uh, drawing to a close. Um, so so this is this is a pipeline, as you can see, and it is also the direction in which the, um, the ship is sailing or the train is moving. So uh, please come and join, um, hop on board as we um, um, on this. And uh, also this event is organized or uh, um, uh, organized by machine learning um, uh, community, ML for AU, community of practice, as well as ADSN and um, and um, Australian data, um, that is Australian Data Science Network, as well as ARDC, um, and uh, as uh, and a number of other partners who are part of this. So, um, so that 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 includes uh, QCIF, Intersec, a uh, number of universities, and um, um, is, uh, um, uh, NCI, OC. Um, and uh, and so on. So um, please come along. So, um, be, uh, participate in machine learning community of practice as well as well as uh, ADSN if your center has um, relevance to data science or AI. And uh, 
the invitation, Zulip chat invitation for ML for AU is already um, in, in the chat as well. So um, with that, if there are any final questions or anything from our uh, other collaborators who have been um, who haven't had a chance to say anything, uh, um, please um, feel free to uh, jump in. One comment, Nana, um, and that yes. is that the group map will stay open and won't close it off. So if you want to have a think about things and put um, comments in over the next week or two, I'll come back and check it um, in a yes. couple of weeks and pass any feedback on to everyone. Thank you. Um, thank you, Nicola. Uh, so would so would be other channels that will remain open as well for you to join or contribute as well. And um, Divya, Anastasios, uh, Amy, have anything uh, or uh, Tim? Well, I think we should just think of all of those people. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I thank uh, I I thank everyone and uh, I mean all the contributors and as well as all the attendees here, um, the authors, reviewers, um, communication, copy editing, um, some um, um, the experts and the workshop participants. Um, you all and um, we all made it possible uh, for us to get here. Uh, we want you to continue to um, engage with us and support. Thank you.